Shall, uh, I, do do your, shall I do your review, a review of If I Stay? Yes, and if okay, I jump fine. in, that'll be why. Okay, so sort of hot on the heels of Fault in Our Stars. It's another, you know, it's a teen romance thing in which teen romance is a matter of life and death. It's based on the... Um, young adult novel by Gail Foreman, adapted by Shauna Cross, who, of course, wrote Whip It, which I like very much. Story is, um, there is a romance between uh, Chloe Grace Moretz's cellist and a Portland rocker played by Jamie Blakely, who's a kind of guitarist. They, this romance is played out in flashback because very early on in the movie, there is a car crash. She is then in hospital and her disembodied spirit is walking the corridors of the hospital, effectively attempting to decide whether she should stay or whether she should go in toward the light. Now... Obviously, there is a degree of mawkishness involved in this, and the, and certainly the film doesn't soft pedal. I mean, it, it it does have it does you know do all those kind of you know sentimental cranky things that this genre of film do. If you think about this in comparison with you know the old uh, the musical genre of things like Leader of the Pack, I mean that that whole idea of love and death being tied together in you know angsty teen romance is 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 pretty regular. The thing about the film is it's actually better than you would expect, particularly considering the. On the one level, on one hand, slight preposterous, not slight, the innate preposterousness of the story, which is that you know she is literally walking around the corridors of the hospital, seeing people coming to visit, finding out what's happened to all the other people who are involved in the car crash. That is preposterous. However, it does treat its audience with a certain degree of intelligence and indeed uh, resilience. And Chloe Grace Moretz is pretty good. Stacey Keach is really, really terrific as the grandfather. He only has a sort of a couple of small scenes, but there are little moments in it which do strike home. I'm not saying it's a great movie at all. It is absolutely a young adult, you know, death and romance. Will they, won't they, you know, overwrite, all those things. But it's kind of grounded partly by the fact the script is rather well written. As I said, Sean Cross is a good writer. The other thing about it, which I'm not sure other people have sort of honed in on, is that Chloe Grace Moretz's character is meant to be somebody who discovers herself through playing the cello. And every time people play musical instruments in movies, it drives me nuts because most of the time they don't look like they're actually playing them. You know, it's like one of my favourite films is Jeremy. And Jeremy is a cellist. Oh, I remember yeah, you no, liked that. Yeah, and I Jeremy is a cellist. But one of, the things that's, one of the things that's wrong with Jeremy is it looks like he has never held a cello in his life. Chloe Grace Moretz is apparently not a cellist, but went away and studied cellist and from a musical point of view when she's playing the cello she actually looks like she's playing the cello and that may sound like straight to the heart of the periphery like somehow this isn't important but it is those weird little bits of character definition are the thing that either make you care or, or not care about the characters and i have to say that having seen her character look like she actually genuinely fell in love with playing cello music somehow lends a credibility to a ridiculous story about her then falling in love with a kind of portland rocker and then having this out of body experience in which on the one hand she's got to go back to the world or on the other hand off to the light it is very very easy to sneer it's a film which understands its target audience and it's it's not as good as the fault in our stars which you and i've discussed at great length but you know what it's not bad I mentioned earlier Charlie uh, Higson when he was speaking to Richard Bacon uh, was explaining why, in his opinion, it's OK for grown-ups to, uh, to read fiction. Young adult fiction. And, yeah. and, and, as if that still needs to be... I don't think anyone's particularly surprised by that. But the, the novels that get that right the most are the ones that really break out. And the movies that get that right the most, whether it be uh, the movies that we've discussed you know, yeah. with great regularity, aimed at the team franchise, and then expand and everyone loves it. We're talking about Hunger Games, that kind of thing. Yeah. Is this movie, does it have that sensibility so that it's it knows what its target audience is but can actually break out into the I would the say no, us? no. I think, it's, I think it is actually playing to its target audience, unlike those other titles that you've mentioned. I think that's what it's doing.